Call of Duty Finest Hour is the first Call of Duty ever released on consoles and the first full game in this retrospective that I've never played before. Released in 2004, the game was developed by Spark Unlimited, a developer whose last game came out in 2014, so I don't think they're around anymore. Trying to judge a game on any level that's 20 years old as of the making of this video is a little challenging. Obviously, there are going to be things that were the norm at the time that have since changed, and graphics improve, yada yada yada. I'm going to do my best to try and be fair towards the game and keep in mind the expectations of the time, but I'm also going to honestly share what my experience with the game was and how it holds up today. I did reference some reviews from the time from both GameSpot and IGN to see how the game was reviewed at the time of release, though beyond that there doesn't seem to be that much information about this game. I'm gonna be frank here and say that I didn't really enjoy my time with Finest Hour. In fact, looking ahead to the rest of the series, this might end up being my least favorite Call of Duty game when all is said and done. I know that's a pretty bold prediction to make this early in the retrospective, but I would be surprised if I'm wrong about that. I played Call of Duty Finest Hour for one playthrough on normal difficulty on the Xbox 360 thanks to backwards compatibility. So to get it out of the way, the game doesn't hold up super well visually 20 years on, which is to be expected. I think it was pretty on par with other games at the time though. It's a shame the game was only ever released on console, because at the very least you'd be able to increase the resolution on PC. As it stands, the game runs at 480p, which was one hell of a blast from the past, if I may say so. Unlike the first game, Finest Hour actually has some traditional cutscenes, and the characters that you play are voiced somewhat. The game definitely tries to have a little more of a cinematic presentation than the first game. The lighting is pretty flat, apart from a couple of missions, but for some reason the game is overall really dark, and it can genuinely be difficult to make out what's going on in certain levels. I tried adjusting my monitor's brightness and contrast, because the game itself doesn't have any brightness options, but I couldn't get the game to look good while also being bright enough. Any daytime missions were fine, but there were a few missions that took place during the night, and a couple that took place underground, and those were a real pain. The audio is pretty good with decent voice acting and sound effects. It's not amazing, but it gets the job done and paints an adequate auditory landscape of war. The musical score is what you'd expect from this era of Call of Duty. Composed by Michael Giacchino, who also did the scores for the first Call of Duty game as well as several Medal of Honor titles, the score features heavy use of orchestration with strings and horn instruments. The music shifts between solemn, heroic, and triumphant moments, as well as frantic and frenetic battle tunes. It's a good score, though I don't think it will linger in my memory. Brian Johnson, the singer of ACDC, voices one of the characters in the game, the British Sergeant Bob Starkey. Insert pun about an ACDC song here. The game has a few extras to offer, like an animation reel, some concept art, and three making of vignettes that aren't really that insightful. There's also cheats that you can activate after beating the campaign, so if you want to go through the game again with big head mode on, you can. So technically speaking, the game has a lot of pop-in, and there were even times where NPCs would spawn directly in view out of thin air. There were a handful of times where NPCs would die but just freeze in place, and there was this instance of a texture being transparent on a tank. The game did freeze a couple times, but I have a feeling it has more to do with the state of my disc than anything else. The biggest issue for me was the completely inconsistent frame rate. The game seems to aim for 60 frames per second, but the frame rate is constantly dipping and sometimes seems to go all the way down to 30. Personally, I would prefer a game with a stable 30 frames per second than a game with a fluctuating frame rate that tries to hit 60. This era of Call of Duty didn't really have much going on in the way of narrative or character depth. Finest Hour does make an attempt to piece together some sort of story, but it ultimately doesn't really come together in any meaningful way. There are three different campaigns, each taking you through various locations and missions of the Russian, British, and American forces respectively. The Russian campaign is the longest, followed by the American, and the British is by far the shortest with only four missions. It's actually so short that I wonder if missions were cut due to time or budgetary constraints. Each campaign sees you taking on the roles of multiple soldiers, each with a face, name, and voice. 
There's a quick voiceover before each set of missions where the character you play as introduces themselves, says a little something about their life, and then we get into the opening cutscene of the mission. While it's cool to see a little bit of effort put into trying to tell a story, it really doesn't amount to much. I can't name a single character off the top of my head. The game does feature the first female character in any Call of Duty game and highlights an African American tank crew, which I thought was an interesting attempt to tell a more unique viewpoint of the war, but it really is just window dressing and doesn't actually add any depth to the story or characters. The game does have some real footage of World War II interspersed between each campaign accompanied by some voiceover to add context, but context on its own does not a story make. One thing I found interesting is that while Finest Hour isn't a port of the first COD game, the Russian campaign does have a lot of similarities to the first game's Russian campaign. They both start exactly the same with your character arriving on a boat, not having a weapon to start, and following a rifleman giving you orders, eventually descending underground into sewers. The reason why I didn't end up enjoying my time with this game that much mostly stems from the gameplay. There are just a bunch of things that work together to create an unenjoyable gameplay experience. Some of these issues are obviously due to things having changed over time like control layouts, and some of them are not. Finest Hour's control scheme is different from modern shooters. You pick up guns and interact with objects with RB, you reload with LB, you throw grenades with X, you jump with Y, melee with A, and switch weapons with the D-pad. The game was designed to function with the original Xbox controller, but I'm playing it with a 360 controller. It took a little while for me to adjust to the control layout, but I got the hang of it quick enough, although I definitely wasted many a grenade when I was trying to reload. The game still does not have regenerating health and still uses hitscan weapons, which is a recipe for frustration as far as I'm concerned. However, it does do a bit to try and mitigate that frustration by allowing the player to carry a certain amount of health packs with them that you can choose to use whenever you want. Grenades have also been assigned to a dedicated button, meaning you don't have to switch to them anymore like in the first game. United Offensive, the expansion to the first game, added a sprint functionality that is nowhere to be seen in Finest Hour. Friendly fire doesn't seem to exist in Finest Hour, at the very least I was never able to hurt or kill my friendly NPCs. Speaking of which, the AI in this game is incredibly inconsistent. There were times where my friendly AIs were helping me kill enemies, clearing out rooms, and being very effective. Other times, they were constantly getting in my way, trapping me in rooms, getting themselves killed, and seemed unable to hit a stationary target directly in front of them. The same goes for the enemy AI. Sometimes they seemed like they were flanking and using cover and throwing grenades to flush me out, while other times they stood completely in the open, couldn't figure out how to get through a door, would get stuck running into a wall and completely ignored grenades I threw directly at them. You can sort of give orders to soldiers by moving close to them and pressing RB, which seems like it's supposed to urge them forward. It doesn't really work like that, however. They kind of just spaz out a bit and then take cover. You can also heal your friendly soldiers, however doing so requires a health pack which you could use for yourself instead, so it really isn't worth it considering how unreliable your AI companions are. There are a decent amount of weapons in the game from each faction, your standard World War II shooter stuff like MP40s, M1 Garands, the usual suspects, though a lot of them have some really wacky recoil. And there are a handful of different grenades and explosives. The biggest nail in the coffin for Finest Hour is its terrible controls. I can't remember the last time I played a shooter with controls this bad. They feel so sluggish and unresponsive, it made the game a chore to play. There are three different options for sensitivity, but none of them feel good. The slow setting feels like you're stuck in molasses, the fast setting is way too sensitive, and the normal setting is sluggish. It's not just me either. My friends agree with me. Finest Hour does not have split-screen multiplayer, so I got my roommate and my brother to play System Link multiplayer with me and they both agree that these controls really suck. They've also played their fair share of Call of Duty. The multiplayer is fine, by the way, it's nothing special, but there are a couple maps from this game that ended up appearing in future Call of Duties. The controls would be bad enough, but there are other factors that compound that frustration. As previously mentioned, the game's frame rate fluctuates all the time, and anytime you get shot the game hitches for a sec. 
There are multiple tank missions in the game, which wouldn't be so bad, but oh wait, the tank controls suck too. At least your tank does have regenerating health, and the minimap objective marker is terrible at showing you which direction you're supposed to go in every mission. When it comes to the shooting, when you can finally wrestle your reticle over an enemy to shoot them, you have to contend with death animations that are far too long. In the first game, whenever you shot an enemy, there was a quick and very readable animation that let you know immediately if the enemy was shot and or if the enemy was dead. The animations only lasted maybe a second long, if that. The death animations in Finest Hour do not telegraph well enough whether or not an enemy is dying or if they are just hurt. And beyond that, when they actually die, the animation takes way too long to happen, so you're sort of just waiting there a couple seconds to see if they actually die, or you can waste your ammo to shoot them way more than you need to just to make sure. There is a red indicator that shows up when you shoot an enemy, but it really doesn't help much. Again, these aren't things that just bother me. The GameSpot review from back in the day specifically calls out that same issue, as well as the checkpoint system, which is another pain in the ass because it's awful. There will be entire missions without a single checkpoint, so if you die, you can waste more than 20 to 30 minutes of your time. And let me tell you something, the older I get, the less time I want to waste replaying levels because developers didn't see fit to put in a good checkpoint system. I'm an adult, I've got responsibilities and bills to pay and back pain. I don't got time for this crap. This wouldn't be so bad on its own, but combined with all the other issues, most of my deaths felt like I was being screwed over by the game because of all of its gameplay flaws. At the very least, you regain all of your ammo and guns when you die, so you won't ever be stuck somewhere without the means to progress. I do not think I will ever play this game again. Apart from it not having aged all that gracefully, the gameplay is an unenjoyable mix of terrible controls, an awful checkpoint system, and shooting that's let down by poor design choices. The game makes some attempts at adding more depth to a typical World War II shooter narrative for the time, but it does not end up being more than the sum of its parts. I don't think this is a terrible game, but I don't think it's a good game either. I said at the beginning of this video that this might end up being my least favorite Call of Duty game and I still think that's probably going to be the case. Because no matter what kind of issues I may have with future games, I think that the experience of playing them will not end up being as frustrating as my experience was with this one. I would only recommend Finest Hour to hardcore shooter fans looking to play something they've never played before, or people who really enjoy COD campaigns like myself. But bear in mind, I still didn't really like this game, even though I am a fan of FPSs and a COD campaign enthusiast. I'm going to give Call of Duty Finest Hour a 6 out of 10. Well, I'm glad that's done. I'm looking forward to getting to the good stuff, the real meat of the franchise, the stuff everyone loves, before getting to the other parts where everybody feels like Call of Duty fell off. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and commenting your thoughts on the game. Thanks for watching.